Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop. Um, so today I'm starting a big project and it's going to be a multi-part project. And uh, so as you already know from the title, um, I'm going to be building a CNC from scratch using a set of plans that I found online and um, I'm going to try to make it as cheaply as possible. So just to give you an idea of what as cheaply as possible means um, I've already bought all of the parts all the electronics and the motors and the hardware and everything that's needed to build this and I can build a four foot by four foot CNC with the parts that I bought and I've spent roughly one thousand dollars on everything I don't really have to spend anything else except for the consumables which would be the router bits. So I want to use this video as kind of an introduction to the series and I want to give you an idea of my goals for this project and I will go over what I'm doing in preparation for starting this project and then hopefully you will follow me through this journey and uh, if you're interested in doing that you can hit the subscribe button uh, so you can follow along with the build and I'd love any type of feedback, any comments or suggestions that you guys have. You can go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. And um, hopefully I haven't bitten off more than I can chew, but uh, only time will tell. So if you're interested, stick around. So why do I want a CNC? Well, that's a good question. As you know, I'm interested in lots of different aspects of the maker scene and I am interested in, t in CNC things. I have um, 3D printers and I have a CNC laser uh, just the engraver not a cutter um, and so I figure the next step for me to build on what I'm learning is to get myself a CNC router and I know there's going to be arguments about whether or not using a CNC router is real woodworking or not I look at it as a tool just like my table saw is a tool sure I can use a handsaw and saw my wood with a handsaw table saw makes it a lot easier does that make it less of a woodworking tool than a manual saw that's up for debate but I don't think so and a CNC a lot of people may consider cheating but I see it as something that can maybe ease up my workflow a little bit um, for like repetitive parts if I want to go that route but I think it's also going to allow me to do more creative things and have abilities that I wouldn't have with the equipment that I currently have in my shop also as you may or may not know I have started building my own guitars and I've just taken the first steps in that journey I don't know much and I am doing it without the help of any type of CNC in the beginning I want to get good at doing it uh, with my own hands and the tools that I have in this shop first and then if I feel like it's something that I'd like to expand upon um, I can have the CNC aid me in uh, doing some of the more time-consuming um, operations in that project but this might be a sneak peek. I don't think I'll have a video out on this yet, but so here's some of the things that I've been doing uh, with the guitar building. And um, it's it's been very enjoyable. Now the key to any good DIY CNC build is a good set of plans. And I got this set of plans from a guy named Dave Gatton. You can actually visit his website at davegatton.com. This is actually, I believe, an older design of his, and he has an updated design that makes it easier to scale up the CNC that you want to build. This CNC is a two foot by four foot, and um, in order to make it a, a four foot by four foot, I'm going to have to uh, modify some of the um, layouts. and. The great thing about the Dave Gatton designs is he does provide full-size layouts that you can tape together and cut out and then you have your patterns that you can use to cut the wood cut the wood to the right shape. 
And I didn't mention this before, but yes, I'll be using Baltic birch plywood to create this CNC router. Um, and there's some other uh, materials also that I will show you right now. Okay, the motion of this router is going to be controlled by these Acme five start half inch lead screws here. This is, so this is going to be a lead screw driven CNC. And the carriages will ride on these pieces of aluminum angle. So I've got one inch angle here for the Y motion and the X and the Z motion will be on this three quarter inch angle here. And the carriages themselves will have these V groove bearings that will actually ride onto the, the aluminum angle. The lead screws will move the carriages via these uh, Acme lead screw nuts. They have an anti-backlash feature. They're made out of Delrin and they are machined by a company called Dumpster CNC. The lead screws will couple to the stepper motors with these specially made couplers. They are also made by Dumpster CNC. Speaking of motors, I will be using four of these NEMA 23 size motors and hopefully I got the right size. I'm not too sure. I bought this kit from a company called Sane Smart. Um, they had a good sale going and they had the right controller board that I wanted to use which interfaces with Mach 3 via USB. So I have that right here. There's a power supply there. And these are the actual uh, the drivers for those motors right there. So I've got four of them. I'm going to have you know, one Z, one X, and two Y. I think that's how it goes. And you know, don't hit me too hard if I got the nomenclature wrong or if I've got my Z and my Y I'm sorry, if I got my X and my Y mixed up because um, I'm still learning here. And then to round out everything, I bought this um, DeWalt variable speed router motor here. And it comes with a half inch and quarter inch collet. And I might also get a eighth inch collet adapter if I want to do any type of fine V carving type work. So what I did first was I went through the plans and I made a spreadsheet of all of the parts that I needed and where they were located and I did a little bit of research to get better prices on different things but mostly I got everything from McMaster Car, um, Amazon for like the router motor, Dumpster CNC for those specialty adapters and, and nuts. SaneSmart.com for the MicroStep drivers, the motors, and the power supply. And my local hardware store for all of the screws, bolts, nuts, wing nuts, and everything else that I was going to need. And obviously you have to source your own plywood. Anything that's like seven plies and up is probably good enough quality for this. But I had a sheet of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, which is about the highest quality plywood that you can find. And so I have that. If I run out of this, I also have some seven ply cabinet grade oak plywood as well that I can use. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I, this, this hopefully serves as a little introduction and hopefully it gets you interested in this. And relatively speaking, to get a four foot by four foot CNC for a thousand dollars is a steal. Um, there's going to be a lot of work involved and there's going to be a very large learning curve for me to have to overcome in order to be able to figure out how to put it all together and how to program it. And just, I've never done this before. so. I'm pretty excited to get started on it and I hope you uh, join me for this journey and uh, thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.